Witchy Affirmations with Lorelei Black. I'm witchy enough. My craft is folkloric enough. And doggone it, I like me. If, like me, you've been on social media, cruising through the witchcraft images, maybe even sharing some of your own practice, you too might need some daily witchy affirmations to deprogram the not enough syndrome. You know the one. You see gorgeous altar, tool, or ritual photos, and you think, my space and my practice isn't nearly aesthetic enough. I couldn't possibly share it with anybody else, and maybe it sucks. Does it suck? You read, post after post from a witch that you admire and think, I'm not nearly immersed enough into my own craft. Maybe I suck. You dare to share your own practice and some complete stranger on the internet tells you, that's not traditional witchcraft. That's not folkloric. Your heart longs to be the witchiest witch who ever witched but you are drowning in a sea of comparison. You're not alone. I am often right there with you, my friend. But I believe there is hope. Welcome to the cottage here at Blade and Broom. I'm Lorelei Black your favorite witchy aunt. And I am always ready to chat with you about traditional and folkloric witchcraft and the occult and magic and all kinds of witchcraft and just folklore in general. Cool stuff. If you're new here, please subscribe and click the bell so that you get notifications. And if you're returning, welcome back. Links for today's resources as always, are in the description box below, along with a link tree that gives some ways to support the channel if you're interested in doing that, including the Patreon, the Etsy shop, the Red Thread Academy, and Evoke Publication. Thank you so much for supporting this wonderful witchy content in all the ways that you do. So, Taya Kennedy, whose YouTube channel you should absolutely check out if you're into traditional and folkloric types of witchcraft because she's cool like that, posted recently, and when I say recently, it was honestly probably like a couple of months ago because I am way behind my game recently. <laughs> um, she posted recently about practice paralysis in witchcraft. And she kind of described that as the immobilization of our own practice after encountering like a barrage of other kinds of witchcraft images, mostly on social media. Sometimes this occurs just because we like get swept away on the tide of social media scrolling. And very often what happens is that we get a little overwhelmed or intimidated by the imaging or the branding that these other creators have in place. And yes, even personal accounts that like aren't selling anything and are just sharing their practice can have imaging and branding into them. We're like very social marketing creatures these days, or at least we're trying to be some of us aren't that good at it <laughs> or don't feel that good at it, um, feel a little stressed out by it. And so some people are fantastic at it and they create this peek into a world and you think you're seeing all of it, but really you're just seeing like a little piece um, that's very carefully crafted to be able to show you almost a fantasy of what it is that you also want to be immersed in. So sometimes that branding makes us feel less than, and then we don't do our own thing because we don't feel like it's good enough in reality. And we're comparing our reality to their crafted marketing, which is really unfair to us. And not necessarily what they're trying to accomplish, right? Because generally speaking, those accounts are trying to inspire us, not say, you shouldn't do the thing because I do it so much better than you. So first off, fuck the comparison. 
You know what you never see on the witchiest witch whoever witched Instagram and TikTok accounts? Actual signs of life. No giant plastic toddler toys. No bunny hay strewn on the floor. No teenager nests in the living room. No dishes stacked in the sink. No piles of soda cases next to the refrigerator. No electrical cords that you just can't seem to hide. The really appealing social media images are the ones that perpetuate a fantasy. And they're meant to be inspirational, I think. I'm pretty sure. That's my hope. This is what it could be like if you lived a life entirely devoted to witchcraft and housekeeping and antique shopping. Who actually lives like that? Independently wealthy off-grid witches who still manage to take lots of photos and videos for their massive social media followings? Yeah, I'm an influencer. Confession time. I don't much experience practice paralysis, as I have something much more like sharing paralysis. I go straight into an anxiety spiral over what to post, what not to post, what's authentic, what's too curated, house clutter, body image issues. I get so self-conscious sometimes that it totally gets in the way of my teaching and connecting with people, which is why I want to be on social media in the first place. And then there are those folks who slide into your comments or into your DMs to tell you that the thing that you shared isn't enough in some way. It isn't traditional enough. It isn't witchy enough. It isn't folkloric enough. Do you even witch, bruh? They try to make themselves feel like the witchier witch by making someone else feel less than. Today it's you. I want to tell those people, put a ripe banana right into your favorite ear. Honestly, I'm usually pretty diplomatic about it. I'll take a little bit of time and explain the whither twos and why fours of my rationale because I'm here to teach anyway, so why not? I may not change their minds, but at least the people who come along after them will benefit from the information that I shared. After that, I do my absolute best not to feed the trolls. It can be really hard to disengage, but it keeps me sane. Raise your hand if you know the work of researcher, public speaker, and author Brene Brown. One of my friends and I have taken to calling her Saint Brene. I reference her work a whole lot because her research has to do with shame, vulnerability, creativity, courage, authenticity, and wholeheartedness. These are a few of my favorite things. It was Brene Brown who brought the Teddy Roosevelt quote about the man in the arena into my life. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. And friends, what is witchcraft if not an act of great daring? To know, to will, to dare, to keep silent. <laughs> Don't allow the fantasy and the inspiration of someone else's posts to feed your inner critic. And definitely don't give energy to anyone in the cheap seats who loves a rotten tomato your way. The end. <laughs> I'm struggling with conclusions right now, so I'm just like patting myself on the back for having done a video this week. <laughs> Bless me with the magic of the like button and tell your witchy friends that there's good stuff happening over here at Blade and Broom. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments in the discussion below. And if you'd like to learn more about practicing traditional witchcraft, clink, clink on the lick. <laughs> no. Click on the link <laughs> um, down below for a free ritual guide. Three rites that every traditional witch should know. 
or if you're really into it, you can go straight over to the link for the Red Thread Academy Year One pra uh, Foundations course. The practicum course for Year Two is coming out very soon, so it's on the brain. The Red Thread Academy is the online witch school that I run, um, and I would love to interact with you there if you're interested in learning more about the stuff. I will see you back here next week for more witchy goodness. Bye friends.